Manchester United. They won the Carabao Cup over the weekend. Uh, Ten Hag's first piece of silverware with the club. What were your biggest observations from this game? I think the same that you and I have been uh, been talking about it. Uh, you know, this is this is Manchester United. And let's be fair, because I don't know how much time we're going to have uh, to talk about Newcastle United. Both teams saying we're back. We're here in the big time. It, it may just take some time, especially uh, for Newcastle. Uh, but they, they are back. We've seen this, uh, uh, you and I, for a long time. I think the one thing that we can feel comfortable in saying that we didn't just uh, jump on this bandwagon of of, of Ten Hag. Uh, we've been saying this uh, for a little bit. Uh, I've said that if they beat Barcelona, they're going to go from strength to strength. And this is going to continue. This is... Uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful transformation under an incredible manager who understands what it means to manage best players at the highest level of football. You were talking when we were um, going into Chelsea's problems about some of that youth and where some of that leadership might come from. You look at players here, Casemiro, Lissandro Martinez, Rafael Varane, and then the partnership that those two have got right now winners already who weren't even phased by the big occasion. Chelsea must be looking so longingly at players like that with all the money they've spent. Yeah, but they had those players in place already. That's the massive difference. That's why the points that I've uh, uh, made about Chelsea I could kind of go well with this one. Because Chelsea don't have those players, not at this caliber. I think we always felt that Manchester uh, United had those type of players. Yes, they've added. And again, they made the right decisions. I mean, how long ago has it been since Lisandro Martinez was too small, right? Uh, you know, we talk about Casemiro, who... who and and you know him very well, right? Covering La Liga, and we watch it. Uh, I almost say I almost I almost want to say that he's actually playing better than he did uh, at Real Madrid because at Real Madrid he was tremendous, uh, but he also had the likes of uh, Toni Kroos and Luka Modric at their best, right? So he could concentrate on his job to make make sure that he sweeps up and behind him. Uh, a player that I felt protected the back line in Real Madrid, Real Madrid tremendously. I think he saw this as, as you know, I can be the one and the most important in the midfield because he he wasn't always that at Real Madrid, right? Maybe he wanted to prove a point that he's not done. He's certainly doing that. Uh, but it's almost too easy to talk about that, uh, just that, because look at Rafael Varam. I mean, we're not talking about this. this is a player that won everything. Is there anything that he hasn't won of any importance, right? Uh, I mean, this is a player that's reborn, who understands his role right now, and who I assume uh, benefited from uh, from uh, uh, Ten Hag as well. But most importantly, we have to look at Ten Hag from a different angle as well, because he's added an incredible fluidity to this team. And if you think of Dutch managers, I mean, the one thing you say about Dutch from the young age, right? I mean, if you play in Holland, you have to be able to play in every position. And that fluidity is for total football, right? Total football. You have to and look at that. I mean, he can make changes without making changes. Uh, and, and you know, so the fluidity starts in the back. Look, Shaw, left back. I mean, obviously much, much better now than he was before. There were so many question marks about Luke Shaw. If he's good enough, can he last the entire 90 minutes, right? Uh, remember, and it was true. I mean, to me, he was the player that could only play for 60 minutes. And after that, he was done. Now he plays center back. He plays center back because he knows how to bring the ball out of the back. He's technical enough. Ten Hag trusted him, right? You look at, uh, you know, f further up the pitch and, and you know, we can go on and on and on. And, you know, Val Vekhorst uh, can play number 10. He can play number nine. You can look at uh, Bruno Fernandes, who plays on the right side. Even in this last game, started central. Things maybe weren't at the best when uh play a little bit wider on the right side rashford number nine he can play on the left wing left wing as well and not to say that others don't do it manchester city certainly does from time to time but you th but i think there's more purpose in this manchester united team when and how they change these players now you look at uh, Juan bisaka coming in what a competition there with yoga the law the law and the yellow card understanding no problem quickly out i don't know i mean i'm, I'm sure everybody has saw that i mean he's put in three or four tackles within the first 10 minutes he was on the pitch that were not only critical, but perfect. So he feels that competition. He feels that he was given a chance because one Bisaka was for, was a forgotten man for a while there. He, but you know, he took, took this upon himself to say, no, I want to be a part of this because there's something special happening. They see it, they sense it. It's not done, but it's on its way. 
Last question. I'm going to return to a question I asked you a couple of weeks ago, because I know how you are, Yanish. Sometimes you go away, you think about it a little bit longer and you go, oh. So a couple of weeks ago, we asked you who would be the perfect compliment to Marcus Rashford if they were to bring another player in up top. Who would it be for you? Uh, I said it before, I'll say it again. Harry Kane would be ideal man for now. I mean, he's still got uh, some years uh, 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 to go. I think somebody... You know, maybe Ivan Tony, another player that I think understands the league. He's young. Obviously, he's got some issues off the pitch, but, you know, hopefully that's resolved. And I don't know if that would be an issue uh, for Manchester United and for Ten Hag, who we know discipline and stuff on the pitch and off the pitch is ex extremely important. I don't know it. So it's very, very difficult for me to say. But uh, those two players come to mind. Uh, obviously, somebody like Osim Hen ideal i'd still probably you know i mean he needs to confirm that but i think we've seen enough to know that with his pace ability to score more importantly an ability to to assist as well right so he does more than just score uh, would be um um would be critical as well so those three players just quickly in a in a lazy way uh come to 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 fort uh, immediately but, but i think harry kane would be i, I really do uh, Harry Kane with his with that and just the fact fact how hungry he is to get a title I think that's super important combination play as as we've said I in terms of fluidity I could see Ten Hag being able to use him as that number nine number 10 change things around a little bit his hunger and his incredible consistency in his career in this particular league as well uh, and obviously playing for England international uh scoring in the Champions League almost a perfect package and the you know the experience i would forget about his age because experience for now here and now is critical for the rest of the season now and for next year where certainly manchester united are going to be one of the favorites to win it yeah so maybe a hurricane will end up in manchester after all but not at the club it was supposed to be in the beginning thanks so much for being with us on the latest edition of pl express we're here every single monday make sure to always join us thank you very much for watching espn fc on youtube for more highlights analysis and exclusive content be sure to subscribe